Uh, my dear friends in Christ, I want to begin this homily by saying something that everybody already knows, something really obvious. The Christian life is difficult. The Christian life isn't easy. Right? It's a challenge to rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us. It's difficult to let go of your own plans in order to follow the will of God. It's hard to experience division, especially in family life, when you finally decide to give your heart completely to Jesus. It's tough when friends, family, and co-workers ridicule you because of your Catholic faith. In other words, it's not easy to persevere in running the race like we hear in the letter to the Hebrews today. And that's such a beautiful image of the spiritual life, right? Running a race. Imagine yourself running a marathon. Maybe it's really easy for you to imagine yourself running a marathon because maybe you've done it, but maybe it's like really, really hard or impossible to imagine yourself running a marathon because maybe you're like, I'm completely out of shape. That's like a, that is like a fairy tale. But like whatever your case is, imagine yourself running a marathon, 26.2 miles of grueling pain. Um, and like for me, like I'm not a runner at all. Like I, I don't like it. I don't know how people could possibly possibly find joy in it. I'm amazed at people who do. Michael Mettler is one of them. I'm really happy for you, Michael, that you enjoy running, but I don't get it. But anyways, for some crazy reason, like a few years ago, at my last year of seminary, uh, we decided to, to sign up for the Twin Cities Marathon. And I didn't do it because of, like, for the health benefits or any, like, for the sense of accomplishment. I purely signed up for this marathon out of peer pressure and pride. <laughs> like, that was it. Because, like, I'm not a runner. And, like, like the training itself is grueling. You're like, oh, this is so, like, hard. Because you got to, like, incrementally run your way up to 26.2 miles. For me, fortunately, the Lord had a different plan. I ended up finding a hairline fracture in my foot. And so I never actually had to run it. So I was, like, really pumped about that. But, like, but still, like, it is, it is difficult. And, like, like, while I never ran that marathon, it's kind of easy to imagine what it might have been like, right? Imagining yourself, okay, like 26 miles, okay? It's like you're thirsty, you're exhausted, you're weary, and you're wondering why you signed up in the first place. You're like, what is the matter with me, right? You can't even see the finish line for the majority of this thing. You just know that you have a long way to go. But then a cool thing happens, I'm guessing, if I were to run a marathon. Like you're running and you're going, and then you're like, what's the point? But then all of a sudden, you're reminded of all of the people who are lined up on the side of the road. All of these people who you've never met, who are cheering you on, and are just super pumped for you, and, and just like praying that you make it to the finish line. Like, and that's, that's like got to be like an amazing motivation to keep you going, right? People who are cheering you on to finish this massive race. My dear friends in Christ, as we run this race of the Christian life, you and I are surrounded by holy men and women who have already run the race and who are cheering us on. In the times that we begin to lose heart in the Christian life, when we find prayer to be super difficult or like whatever struggle you're going through, always remember the saints who are constantly interceding for us and praying for us as we are running this race of the Christian life. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded by the saints. And it's especially cool being here at St. Henry's, right? Because it's like, we are literally surrounded by these saints in the stained glass windows, which are just like beautiful reminders that, yeah, not only have they run the race, but this beautiful reminder that they are praying for us. The communion of the saints, this is what we profess every time we pray the Apostles' Creed. Right, the, the communion of the saints, we believe them, and we believe in them. Uh, for me, one of my favorite parts of, of the ordination rite is the moment when the, the candidate for ordination lays face down before the Lord, um, like on, on the marble. And when he offers himself up for the Lord, preparing for this ordination, during that time, it's a long time when you're just laying face down, uh, the people of God are praying the litany of the saints. And there's just this beautiful chant, like over and over again, right? Pray for us. Pray for these fellows who are about to receive this immense gift. Like, pray for them. Like, just thinking back to, like, when I was ordained a deacon or a priest, like, just, like, 
goosebumps of how powerful that moment was of laying face down. Like, I don't know if I'm going to have as, like, a, like a moment like that for the rest of my life. It, it is just so beautifully intense uh, having your family and friends praying for you and then also having, like, the saints in heaven praying for you and interceding for you before the Father in heaven. It's, it's amazing. Like, the saints are awesome. Uh, there's this great line from the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, uh, paragraph 40, or chapter 49. It says that the saints do not cease to intercede with the Father for us as they proffer the merits which they acquired on earth through the one mediator between God and men, Christ Jesus. So by their fraternal concern is our weakness greatly helped. Right? That's so cool. That like the saints in heaven are not reluctantly like looking at us and being like, oh, I guess I'm going to pray for you. Like, that is their job, and they're super good at it. Like, their entire mission in heaven is to pray for us, right? To adore the Father and to, and to, to intercede for us, right? By their fraternal concern, our weakness is greatly helped. Um, they have this fraternal concern for us, right? They are the church triumphant, and they are, they are awesome. They are awesome. Um, Two great quotes that I really love. One is uh, St. Dominic, as he was dying, he said, and he was telling his brothers this, he said, Do not weep, for I shall be more useful to you after my death, and I shall help you then more effectively than during my life. I'm going to be more effective in heaven than I am here for you. And then St. Therese of Lisieux has got that beautiful line where she says, I want to spend my heaven in doing good on earth. That's what she wants to do. And she's amazing, right? The little flower is awesome. And so let's not be strangers to the saints in heaven. They are the friends of God, and they are our friends too. Get to know them, right? Learn them, study them. Like, there's something beautiful about praying through the lives of the saints, uh, these men and women who came before us and who just love God perfectly. Uh, it's amazing. And, they, and then again, like, really to ask for their help throughout the struggles of your life. Like, for example, if you're struggling with cowardice and you're just like, I just don't feel any courage, pray to St. Maximilian Kolbe. Pray to the martyrs. If you're struggling with doubt, pray to St. Thomas and the apostles. If you're struggling with being a good father, pray to St. Joseph. If you're struggling because your kids have left the faith, pray to St. Monica. If you're struggling with alcoholism and addiction, pray to, to Venerable Matt Talbot. If you're struggling with impurity, pray to St. Augustine. Finally, too, if you're struggling with, like, just straight up finding time for prayer, pray to St. Therese, pray to any saint, and be like, help me to fire, to like, to fire my heart up that I might love the Lord the way that you do. You know, they're really awesome. The saints are amazing. And what's cool, too, is, like, in my experience, and I'm sure you felt this, too, um, that if you have, like, a deeper friendship with certain saints over others, I think what's really cool is, is just to, to kind of meditate on the fact that, like, you probably didn't choose them. But they probably chose you, right? By the providence of God, they probably chose you and said, like, like there's a special like relationship here. Like maybe you're you're similar in some regard. Like think of those of you who have been confirmed, your confirmation saint. Like you you didn't just choose that saint by accident. There's some there's some really beauty, some beauty there that the saints are real and alive. They're not dead and in the past, right? But they're alive and again they are praying for us. Um and and yeah, they're awesome. I think sometimes, like, especially like with our Protestant brothers and sisters, uh, they get kind of nervous when we talk about praying to the saints because, you know, like maybe um, it almost looks like we're worshiping them or something like that. But the fact is, is that we know that the saints are not God, these saints in the stained glass windows. They're holy men and women who walked before us. Um, they're, really, they're really beautiful. Right? We're not worshiping them. We're just asking them for help. And again, their number one job is to lead us to Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. Um, they know who the Lord is, and they want to they help us by their prayers and intercession to lead us closer to him, to lead us closer to the cross. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I just want to call upon the greatest saint of all, all time and, and, like, our biggest fan, and that's our Blessed Mother. Um, Mary is, you know, the mother of God, and she's our mother also, and never was it known that anyone who fled to her protection or implored her help was left unaided. She's amazing, and, and on on Monday, um, we have the solemnity of the Assumption, right? Just like asking our, our Blessed Mother for her prayers and for her help. Like, I think the biggest lie, one of the biggest lies that the enemy um, kind of gives us in this life is he says that you're alone. 
You're alone in your struggle. You're alone in whatever it is that you're struggling with. But, it, but that's a total lie, right? Because we're surrounded by our family and friends. And above all, we're sp- surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses who want nothing other than for us to cross that finish line. Like St. Paul talks about. He's like, I have, I have won, won the race. Like, I've, I'm, I'm in. Um, and he wants us there too. That's what all the saints want. All the saints want. The Christian life is definitely difficult, right? It's not easy to persevere in running the race that lies before us. But remember, we are surrounded by the saints, this great cloud of witnesses. So let's run to them and let's ask for their help on this race. Holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us.